Greetings friends and welcome to Enigma Night Gaming. My name is Liara and I will be your guide in today's adventure. Today we are playing King's Quest IV and in today's episode we return to our role as Rosella and we're trying to save our father King Graham from some mysterious ailment that has overtaken him. The fairy Janesta has offered us a fruit that can heal him but in return we need to help her. So today we are going to explore this world full of fairy tales and magic and see what we can do to assist her without further ado you well, let's hop into the game i had some ideas um in all of the other king's quest games we've had fairy tales and i was thinking about the creatures that we ran into this time so we ran into um a frog right at first i was thinking like the frog Prince, like, you know, the princess kisses the frog. But then I thought, uh, as I was looking stuff up, I uh, realized there was another fairy tale involving a frog. I think, the, what was the story? It was like the princess lost her golden ball and the frog found, found it. Hello. Well, hello there. There's no answer. You see a lively creature who is at the same time both man and goat? He is a satyr and his name is Pan. He seems to be greatly enjoying his flute music. Do we have anything that we can do with that? I don't think so. What happens if we go over here? He just runs away. Hmm. There's got to be... How can we get Pan to come to us? I'm not sure. What's in this house? This is the house by the river, right? Or by the, the ocean, right? So, the things that this makes me think of... Oh, she's cleaning. Hello. You try to talk pleasantly to the tired-looking woman, but your words seem to fall on deaf ears. She is obviously annoyed by your presence. You talk to the grizzled fisherman as he sits at the table. Sighing, he tells you, Them fish ain't been biting lately. If things don't get better soon, I don't know what to do. And we don't have anything to help you, do we? Uh, can we give him this? Can we, can we give this to you? Like, what happens if we give that to you? You offer the pouch of diamonds to the fisherman who takes it godly. Wife, give the girl my fishing pole in trade, he tells his tired wife. Obediently, she retrieves the pole and hands it to you. Thank you very much, she says, smiling. You have certainly helped us. Okay. Okay. So we helped them out. Uh, now we've got a fishing pole. What can we do with that, I wonder? We'll have to find out. All right. I mean, do we need to fish? Maybe. Let's see what happens. I, I think we might need some kind of bait, right? What could we bait our fish with, I wonder? Let's go to the pier and see what happens. So if we try... And use the fishing pole. Can we fish? Eagerly from the end of the pier, you fling the line of the fishing pole into the ocean. Are we going to catch anything? Probably not, because we don't have any bait. Almost immediately, you feel a sharp tug on your line. Something pulls and fights your line as you slowly reel it in. There it is! You have caught yourself an old waterlogged boot. But since you have no need of a boot, you toss it back into the water. Okay, so I'm guessing uh, if we don't have the correct bait, we're going to end up with a boot. All right. Maybe the fisherman has some advice for what we could use for bait. We could go talk to him, right? I mean, the worst case is, is he'll just have no advice for us. Let's see. Let's see at least if he can offer us any, any tips. All right. Because we did help you out. You speak to the old fisherman and he replies, You've really helped me and the Mrs. Girly. Those diamonds will come in awful handy. We can't thank you enough. Will you talk to us now? You speak to the fisherman's wife. She smiles as she replies, You're a very kind girl. You helped us out a lot. Why, I might even be able to buy some brand new clothes. Okay. Well, they're just happy. I, I guess there's nothing that, um, unless there's something on the shelves that would help us. Let's see. 
These poor people can afford only a few cans of cheap food. Okay, so this is just food. It's not books. Okay, I guess that makes sense. They they probably don't have much use for, like, reading and stuff. So, now, we're on a quest to find a frog, right? So, let's see what we can do to find us a frog. What is with this tree? This tree just seems off. There is a short tree by the sand beach. There are rocks here and there, but this tree looks different. I don't know why, but it just does. The tree is sh too short to climb on and has no fruit for you to pick. Okay, I, I mean, I guess so. Hmm. Oh, hello? You can't get enough, can you, Rosella? The guy obviously loves an audience as he takes you through another popular ballad. Hmm. Do we have anything we can give him? What is this book? You open the Shakespeare book and thumb through the pages. Contained within it, all the wonderful plays of the playwright William Shakespeare. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know that he would find that useful. All right. So, nothing. There's got to be something we can do with him. But I'm not sure exactly what that would be. Uh, I don't know. Can we go this way? Okay, there's the unicorn. We still don't have anything we can do. Can we use the fishing pole on the unicorn? That would be silly, right? You're not carrying anything the unicorn would want. Okay, so maybe we have to find something to give the unicorn. Perhaps. What would what would the unicorn want, I wonder? All right. Um so this is where we were before. Let's go over this way now and see what we got. Okay. Oh, there's the the unicorn again. All right. What's down this way? Let's look down here. Okay. All right. Uh, what are you? Baby Cupid beats his little wings furiously as he flies through the air. In his chubby hands, he carries a golden bow and two golden arrows. Can I talk to him? There's no answer. Oh, you speak to Cupid, but he doesn't seem to hear you. Oh. You see a little golden bow and two golden arrows on the ground by the pool. Is he going to get mad at me? Cupid won't give them to you. Let's see. You might frighten Cupid if you come too close. Will he talk to us? You speak to Cupid, but he doesn't seem to hear you. Hmm. I wonder what we do with that. We've got... This is a lamp. And I don't know that we can use the fishing pole on them. That would not accomplish anything. Yeah, okay. Can we get in the pool too? He gets out. And he flies away. Okay. Well. Let's see. What's over this way? Uh, have we been here? Uh, what is this guy? Oh no, you're caught. The terrible ogre grabs you by the braids and drags you off to an untimely end. Dinner will definitely be on you tonight. <laughs> Whoops. Okay, so is this the ogre's house? Eh, okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> At least the ogre appreciated your good taste. Is there anything by this rock? Um, it would waste your time to pick flowers. A large rock dominates the clearing. But is there anything about this rock? It won't budge. Uh, you've entered a shady wooded area with birds calling from the many trees. You notice a pool in the distance to the north. Okay, well, let's go south if we can. All right, so here's the frog. Um, let's see. He is on there. All right, I don't see anything here. Let's just, let's just observe. This is a very pretty little pond. Floating upon it are many beautiful water lilies. 
You spy a large frog sitting on top of a big lily pad. And yes, it's wearing a little gold crown. Okay. Many lily pads float upon this little pond. Atop one large lily pad sits a big frog. There are trees are numerous in these woods. Okay. So, I don't know. There's nothing we can... Like, if we go in the pond, we already tried that. Oh, where is this? What does this say? 1643. Here lies Newberry Will. His life was finished because he took ill. But none will miss him. He should have been wiser. Tis his own fault for being such a miser. Uh, we got part of a wall. An old crumbling stone wall surrounds a neglected cemetery. We got a tombstone here. Here I lie with my three daughters who, dried, who died drinking Cheltenham waters. If we had stuck to Epsom, Epsom salt, we should not sleep in this cold vault. We got a tree hole. There is a large round hole in the middle of the old rotted tree. An old rotting tree adds appropriate charm to the decrepit cemetery. Thorpe's corpse. That's simple. Simple and to the point. Here lies the body of Marianne Louder. She burst while drinking a set. What is that? Sides. Sideslits powder. Called from this world to her heavenly rest. She should have waited till it ever vest. Okay. Uh, Dr. I let some. When people's ills, they come to I. I physics bleeds and sweats some. Sometimes they live, sometimes they die. What's that to I? I let some. <laughs> to the ever living memory of Hiram Bennett, baby son of Edward and Sarah Bennett, who by sudden surprise fell asleep on the 11th day of August, 1553, age six months. Oh, sad. Beneath this stone, a lump of clay, lies Uncle Peter Daniels, who early in the month of May took off his winter flannels. Okay. Uh, let's see. Six feet beneath this funeral wreath is laid upon the shelf. One Jerry Jones who dealt the bones, and now he's bones himself. <laughs> okay. Uh, we got a tomb here. Strong and athletic was my frame. Far from my native home I came, and many fought with Simon Byrne, Alas, but lived not to return. Reader, take warning by my fate, unless you should rue your case too late. If you ever fought uh, before, determine now to fight no more. Lord Coningsby, 1559 to 1626. Sleepeth here in peace, an honorable man, a valiant soldier. He served his country well. I plant these shrubs upon your grave, dear wife, that something on this spot may boast of life. Shrubs must wither and all earth must rot. Shrubs may revive, but you think heaven will not. <laughs> Ouch. All right. Uh, more of the broken down wall, right? All right. Uh, interesting. Well, let's go ahead and see what else we got. The cold water of the river wash rushes westward. Can we fish in here? You don't see any fish here. What if we go like um, over this way? Can we fish if we go over this way? What is what is this? Let's see. You notice something glimmer under the stone bridge? Can we take it? What is it? Let's see. You kneel down and peer under the bridge. Aha, you have found a small golden ball. You pick it up and carry it with you. Okay, so that's what I was saying about the fairy tale with the frog. So now we just have to find that frog again, right? All right, let's see if we can find him. Can we give the frog the golden ball? Uh, where is the frog? Right here. Let's see. Can we give it to him? What happens? Spe uh, seeking some calm and rest, you sit down by the pond and watch the water lilies float serenely on its surface as you roll the golden ball between your hands. As your mind wanders off, you accidentally drop the golden ball into the pond. So we're the princess that lost our golden ball. 
From the top of the lily pad, pad, a large green frog leaps into the water and disappears from view. A moment later, the frog emerges with, yes, your lost ball. It seems as if the frog is kindly returning it to you. Now he wants a kiss? Let's see. Is he going to bring it to us? Oh, he's bringing it to us. Nice. Can we talk to him? Well, let's see. Let's take it. Uh, go back over to the ball. He might not let us have it. Let's see what happens. Okay. I wonder what that accomplished. Um, can we talk to him? Ribbit, ribbit. Let's try it again. Um, maybe instead of the ball, we have to take him. Because he didn't run away when we went and picked up the ball, right? So let's try it again and see if he'll retrieve it again. You accidentally drop the golden ball into the pond once again. From atop a lily pad, a large green frog leaps into the water. It disappears from, you, from view. Okay, so he brought it back to us again. Now let's see. Can we take him? Okay. We're going over to the ball, but we're going to pick him up instead. Squinching up your nose in disgust, you catch the large frog and hold it in your hand. It stares at you with its big bulgy eyes and wobbles its throat. Okay. Um, so now, can we kiss it? You look at the frog's green lips. Mmm, good. You feel silly doing this as you slowly put your mouth against the frogs. Aha! Suddenly the little green frog changes into a handsome prince. Of course he does. Who are you, the prince demands. I thought you were supposed to be a princess. Why, you're nothing more than a peasant girl. You blanch a bit at that remark, but say nothing. Well, ta-ta, he says. I'm off. Here, you may keep this. To your surprise, he tosses the little golden crown to you as he takes his leave. Good riddance, you think. <laughs> I mean, yeah, good riddance. Let's also take the ball back. All right. So now we should have the crown. Let's look at this crown. It's a nice little gold crown. Hmm, could we give that to Cupid maybe? I don't know. All right. We figured that out. Nice. So, let's see. Um, we've, we've run into a couple of things. We've run into the satyr. Um, we've run into the bard. Um, let's see. Is Cupid going to come? Okay, Cupid's going to come back. Can we give him a crown? Does he want a crown? Does he want a ball? Let's see. You want a ball? Cupid would not be interested in anything of yours. What is this? Uh, what? It's a robin? A pretty robin pulls hungrily at a long earthworm? Okay. Can we, can we take the worm? Hmm, do we have something that we could do? Can we dig up the earthworm? That would not accomplish anything. What if we walk over here? Will we just scare the the robin away? Probably. He's just okay. Okay, we got a worm. Uh, can we take the worm? We got the worm. Oh, it's for the hook. Scrunching up your delicate nose, you gingerly bait the hook of the fishing pole with a large earthworm. Okay, so now maybe we can go fishing at the pier. So we're going to go to the end of the pier where... Okay, there we are. Oh, we need to get on the pier. Alright. So, we will go to the end of the pier... We may not have the right bait still. Like, it's possible the worm is a bait, but not the bait. So, we'll, we'll just have to see. Can we go fishing now? Eagerly from the end of the pier, we fling the baited line of the fishing pole into the ocean. Now what do we get? Let's see. We caught a boot before. 
Almost immediately, you feel a sharp tug on the line. Something pulls and fights your line as you slowly reel it in. There it is. You have caught yourself a fine, fat fish. Nice. Okay. Let's look at this fish. Phew, the fish stinks. Okay. All right. Oh. Okay. I don't know what we do with that. Hmm. Maybe that was some... No, because we couldn't go fishing until we gave the fishing pole. So, what could we... What could we do with the fish? Whoops. Alright. Um, I'm not sure. What if we, if we try... I'm sure we don't need to offer it to them, right? If we offer it to them, what are they going to say? The fisherman and his wife look at it in interest and shrug and shake their heads. Okay, so they don't want our fish. We tried to be nice, but they're happy with the gems. Okay, so what can we do with the fish? I'm not sure. Hmm. All right. So I think the map, uh... It, it rotates, right? So there's a tree stump here. It, yes, there's a tree stump in the middle of the meadow. Can we dig here? Is there something to dig? That would not accomplish anything. Okay, so we cannot dig here. I don't know why there's a tree stump here. Can we do anything with it? You search the stump but find nothing. Hmm. Okay, I don't know what it's there for, but... We'll see. Okay. Let's just keep looking. Maybe we'll find that satyr again. And we've gotten several items since we last found him. So maybe we can find something. Can we... Let's see. There's nothing in the pail. Can we take the pail? Alright. What about the door? If we open the door, is the ogre going to come get us? Let's see can't it's locked and you don't have the key uh can we look through the window you peek through the window but can make out no details can we open the window window does not open hmm all right so i guess there's nothing we can do with that yet that's definitely the ogre's house but what we do with it i'm not sure all right so let's Keep exploring. Okay. Oh, there's the satyr. Okay. Hello. Do you want to fish? Cam would not be interested in it. Well, let's see. Do you want a fishing pole? Cam would not be interested in that. What about the golden ball or the crown? We'll just try everything we got. He's hard to click on. Uh, we got a lamp. Oh, he ran away. Darn it. I guess we only have a certain number of tries to talk to him. Oh, there he is. Okay. Do you want the lamp? Do you want Shakespeare? Um, we'll read Shakespeare. Tis now the very witching time of night when churchyards yawn and hell itself breathes out contagion to this world. No be so fierce, but no some touch of pity. A horse, a horse, my kingdom for a horse. Maybe we could read that to the unicorn. In thy face I see the map of honor, truth, and loyalty. Is the chair empty? Is the sword unswayed? Is the king dead? The empire unpossessed? What else do we have? Good night, good night, parting is such sweet sorrow that I shall say good night till it be morrow. What all is there? Oh, okay, so then it repeats. Uh, he just at scars that never felt a wound, but saw what light through yonder window breaks. It is the east, and Juliet is the sun. I wonder, like, can we put on the crown? Oof, you're a little froggy. Whoops. Oh, okay, okay. You don't like the clammy feeling of being a frog? You look around, decide there's no reason to be one right now, and remove the little golden crown. 
Oh, okay, that's really cool. So we can turn into a frog. Hmm. Interesting. All right. Um, so my question is, maybe, okay, so maybe we're going to have to go up the mountainside. Because I really don't know um, what else we're supposed to do. Like, Pan, let's look at Pan again. Maybe there's something that we missed, right? Let's see if we can find him again. I think he just danced around here somewhere, right? Or does he just literally randomly appear on any of these screens? Maybe we can... We got a lot of stuff. Maybe we can um, do something with the loot player. Because that was the other person that we've run into and haven't been able to do anything with, right? So we have Cupid. We have the Unicorn. We have... Um, well, there's the Ogre House that we can't do anything with. And there's Pan. And there's also the Bard, right? We can listen to his music, of course. But maybe he'll talk to us? Let's see if we can uh, if we can find him. There he is. The minstrel seems quite pleased that you appreciate his music so much. He obviously loves the attention as he goes into an out of tune version of Green Sleeves. All right. Um, I don't want to give you my good stuff. Would you like a fish? The minstrel looks at your offering with mild interest, but politely declines. Uh, we need the shovel. What about the fishing rod? Do you want a fishing rod? He declines. What about a book? Would you like a book? You would like a book. You hand the Shakespeare book to the minstrel. Curiously, he opens it and begins to read aloud, first hesitant hesitantly, then with increased forcefulness as he begins to get into it. Suddenly, he stops and looks at you. This is wonderful, he exclaims. This gives me a new lease on life. No longer am I a mere minstrel. Now I will become a famous actor. To be or not to be. How's that? And then he gives you his loot and bids you farewell and wanders off to stardom. Oh. Can we play a loot? That's my question. Like, I don't know. Now he's like wandering off. Okay, so we helped him. Nice. All right. Well, let's see. Ooh, can we play for the unicorn? Let's see. Can we play music? We can play pretty well. Oh, the unicorn doesn't like it. We scared the unicorn. Whoops. Ooh, maybe we can play for the satyr, though. Because we're actually pretty good at it. What is this? Looks like something in the tree. I guess it's just the way the branches are. All right. Let's see if we can find... The satyr now. Because now we have an instrument. Maybe we can play instruments with him. Be like, you know, a banjo showdown. <laughs> if we can find him. Ah, there he is. Okay, can we play? Okay. He's liking our, our song. He came over to listen to us. Hello? You speak to Pan, but he doesn't respond. He only stares at you expectantly. You've already attracted Pan's attention. Can we take... Can we talk to you? Can't catch a satyr. Can we give him the loot? Pan gratefully accepts your gift of the loot, and in return he gives you his flute. Happy now, he dances away with it. Nice. Can we play a flute? Let's see. Hmm. Nice. We got a nice little tune going on. <laughs> awesome. I wonder. I wonder if there's something we can do with that now. But maybe we can use it on the unicorn. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. I meant to walk. We might can use it on the unicorn. We'll have to see. This little fidgety getting around the edges here. All right. Let's see if we can find us a unicorn. I don't know 
if we can. We could also try seeing if uh, Cupid wants to hear the flute. He's got that. The bow and arrow. Alright, let's see. Does he want to hear the flute? Oh no, you've startled Cupid. He quickly jumps out of the pool and flies away in fear. Okay, so he doesn't like the flute. We scared him. Oh. Oh. But he left his stuff there. Nice. Can we take it? I mean, that's bad, but I guess we can. <laughs> All right. Well, I guess we're going to steal Cupid's bow and arrow. Feeling sorry for startling Cupid, you decide to hold on to his bow for safekeeping so you can return it to him the next time you meet him. Nice. Okay. So we figured out a lot of stuff. Now let's see if there... If there's anything we can do with the unicorn. All right. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not seeing the unicorn. All right, so I guess we will head over to, okay. We will head to the mountain and we'll see if there's something else we can explore over there, right? Might as well. Off we go. Hopefully we don't die. We saved just before. What are we going to find? Uh-oh. Lottie's goons. I mean, maybe... Let's see. It's, it's, it's the flying monkeys. What's going to happen? Are they going to drop us? Oh. Well, my pets, Lalat hisses. What have you drug home today? Lalat gives you the once over. As she does, her red eyes begin to narrow. Are you a foolish girl who wandered here by mistake? Or, or are you a spy sent here by my enemy, Janesta? You swear to Lalat that you are nothing but a poor peasant girl who has lost her way. But she doesn't seem to believe you as her mouth begins to snarl and her eyes narrow to mere slits. For the first time, you experience real fear and begin to tremble. Lolette snarls, you don't look stupid enough to have wandered here. I believe you're a spy. Take her to the cell. Uh-oh. Uh, are we going to be trapped in the cell? Uh-oh. Oh, my. Oh, no. Poor Rosella, we're stuck in a cell. So there you have it. We are trapped in a cell. Are we going to be able to escape? Is Lolette going to let us out? What's going to happen to us? Are we going to be able to save King Graham? We'll find out all this and more in upcoming episodes. But if you like this kind of content, please make sure to like, subscribe, follow, share, all that good stuff. If you want to watch live, we're on Twitch at twitch.tv slash 27 I have my schedule posted in the about and in the description. And if you want to see which games we're playing each day, I post them on x.com slash 27 And I hope you'll join me in the next one. Until then, guys, bye.